Hi there guys, this is Simon from IV Audio. Today I'm going to be giving you an overview of Carpenter Trombone. Carpenter Trombone is a solo trombone library performed by my friend Dylan Carpenter. It focuses on highly realistic legato playing and also includes a nice staccato articulation. So let's jump right in. First off, you see we have an articulation switcher. You can switch between articulations using the UI or by using the key switches down here at C0. So let's start out with the legato. Now typically when you record legato, you'll record sustains and then you'll record transitions. And when you play a legato transition in contact, you'll get one sustain, faded into a transition, faded into the target sustain. Now I honestly don't think that sounds very good. So what we did was what I like to call comprehensive legato, where every single transition leads into a full length sustain. And that means that in our 30 note legato range, there are 30 individual transition and sustain samples. That's, that's a lot of sampling, but it sounds absolutely amazing. And I wish more commercial libraries would do this because it sounds really good. So let's go ahead and have a listen to the legato. We do have dynamics control on the mod wheel, as well as expression control on CC11. Uh, the dynamics is volume modulation, as well as a filter, which helps a lot with making a convincing dynamic fade. Whereas the expression is just volume. So if you want a little more fun control over the volume, you can use CC11 for expression control. You can right click either of these and learn a different CC automation if you would like. So you may have noticed in the keyboard that we have a green section and a blue section. The blue section is what we recorded full legato for. So every one of these keys is fully legato. There's a transition from every key to every other key in this range. The green keys are just sustains. You can still play from the green to the blue or from the blue to the green, but it won't sound anywhere near as good as playing within the actual legato range. So here's the legato again. Now if we play from a sustain into a legato, it sounds something like this. It's not terrible, but as you can hear, it doesn't have quite the same life, and it doesn't sound quite as nice as when you have an actual legato transition recorded. So before I do the staccato overlay, I'd like to go over the staccato articulation, so I'm going to move on to release samples. The release samples are quite nice. Uh, the behavior is simply when you let go of a key, it contact will jump to the end of whatever sustain is currently playing. So you get a very realistic release that closely matches the tone and feel of the sustain. You can turn those off if you want to, but honestly I think they sound pretty good, so I leave them on. So let's go on to sustains. Sustains are exactly what you expect them to be, they're just sustains. And again, those are mod wheel controlled. Now let's do the staccato patch. So for the staccatos, we recorded four different articulations of different lengths with four or five round robins on each of the articulations. The articulations are controlled by velocity. So if you play a low velocity, you get a very tight, short staccato. And as you increase in velocity, you'll get a slightly longer articulation. You can also let go of a key early to cut off a staccato. So now that we had a look at the staccatos, we can come back to the legato and have a look at the staccato overlay. The staccato overlay takes the attack sound of the staccato articulation and glues it onto the sustain of the legato. So here, we can have a listen to that now. And if I disable the overlay... The staccato overlay follows the same rules as the staccato articulation, so you'll get the attack sound from different articulations as you change velocity. It's subtle, but again, there is a difference. Lastly, let's go over the reverb. This again is the Bercosti M7 Impulse Response Library. It's the same as what's used in Claire Solo. It's a very nice impulse response library that Casey Dowdell at Bercosti kindly allowed me to use. Uh, there's a huge amount of variety in terms of the impulse responses, and I've had a lot of fun playing around with this library. 
We have a wet control, high pass and low pass, as well as an artificial size modifier. And you can toggle the reverb on or off by using this little switch down here. So that's really everything there is to the main UI. If we come over to the advanced settings here, you have some settings for controlling legato and release sample behavior. These are a little advanced, but I'll go over them very quickly. Basically, everything is just dealing with fade times. So legato attack is simply how long it takes for legato sample to fade in when doing a legato transition. Legato release is how long it takes for legato sample to fade out. And the legato attack curve changes whether the attack is linear or something else. And you can control click any of these knobs to reset them to their default values. Legato offset allows you to shift the legato samples slightly earlier or later. So if you want a slightly more sluggish but possibly more realistic legato, you can bring this down. If you want a tighter legato transition, you can bring it up, but you do run the risk of cutting into the sample and having it sound unnatural. Release attack just controls how long it takes for a release sample to fade in. Release volume does exactly what you'd expect it to do. Release offset is very similar to the legato offset. It allows you to have a longer or shorter release sample. And the staccato release controls how long it takes for a staccato sample to fade out when you let go of the key. So that's a general overview of Carpenter Trombone. You can download it for free at ivaudio.com, where you can also find some other free libraries. I really love hearing what people write with my libraries, so if you have a demo track or something you'd like to send me, you can email me at contact at ivaudio.com. That's contact as in C-O-N, not contact as in the sampler. You can also get in touch with me on various social media. So in closing, I'll leave you with an excerpt from a track which is also on the website, which is Music for the Funeral of Queen Mary by Purcell. This is using entirely carpenter trombone.